What you're about to watch is a clip from my Brandlytics training where I get together with entrepreneurs, thought leaders who want to build their brand using YouTube and making data-driven decisions to blow up their brand this year. Enjoy. Welcome everybody. I'll be ready to get started. I'm excited. This is a this is a fun topic. This is something that I obsess over. How do we get our one minute audience retention? It's it's a super geeky topic. Uh, of all the things that um, that I try to teach when I'm doing presentations, uh, this is the only thing that I get technical with: the audience retention curve, the audience retention curve, the audience retention curve. Like, remember this thing, <laughs> pay attention to it, look at your data, because it's easy to get lost in YouTube data. But this one is super, super, super important. Understand that YouTube's goal is to keep you on YouTube, right? That's their goal. So the more you're keeping people on YouTube, the more they're going to promote your videos. And so many people focus on the entire video, which is important. But what often happens is if you get the first minute down really well and you're keeping people for, for that attention, they'll watch the rest of the video. If you go look at most of your curves, you, you'll see it's mostly flat or just slowly sloping down. But that first minute is where we tend to lose people. So people are often shocked. If you go look at your own stats, people are often shocked at how poorly their videos are doing in that first minute. So today, that's what we are talking about. Let me share my screen. Boom. Specific strategies that boost viewer retention. I'm excited. Okay, let's dive in. So the goal. The goal is 70% at one minute. This is, a, this is a really hard number to hit, especially consistently. Nobody hits this number consistently, not, not inside thought leadership. I don't do it. Nobody that, that I've looked at does it. Um, it's really, 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 really hard. And I've looked at everybody's channel, at least the big channels inside thought leadership, but it's still the goal. <laughs> it's, still, it's still that elusive, here's what we're working towards. And this curve, that's the audience retention curve. You'll see this on every single video. This is free um, inside YouTube studio product. Uh, you can get lost again in data, but this one is super, super, super important. And it'll show you basically where people are falling off. So wherever, you know, here, whatever happened here, that sucks. Then that was good, then that sucks. And then that sucked at the end. And then these little peaks here, this is what we're going to share to social content, right? We've talked about this in the past, but uh, just a quick refresh. This slide is one of you guys may have seen in the past. One minute retention. This video we did had 73% at one minute, has almost 3 million views on the channel. And this is what a typical curve will look like, right? It should be slowly just declining over time. And it's this part that we're really trying to optimize in this first minute trying to make sure that we're keeping it not that big a slump. So you'll always get this. You'll always get this little drop here at the beginning. The key is not making that drop and <laughs> losing 40% of our audience, which happens to a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of channels. So here's something that we haven't talked about yet that I wanted to just bring up uh, on your radar. TubeBuddy has a tool that I requested uh, and helped them build called the Retention Analyzer. Now it's a little buggy. And they don't update it very often because they basically made it for me and, and some of the people who like using it. Um, but it's not part of their core thing that like everybody's using it for. But if you are using TubeBuddy for split testing, right now, uh, TubeBuddy is a tool that we use. We've done over 10,000 split tests on the channel, thumbnails, titles, et cetera. If you're on that program, you're on that package, I think that's 50 bucks a month, something like that. It's not, it's not crazy expensive. They have something built in here as well called Retention Analyzer. So if you go to your TubeBuddy, you click on Data and Insights on the left, and then scroll down to Retention Analyzer, it'll pull up your most recent, it's not all, it says all videos, it's not. It's gonna be your most recent, I think, 50 videos. And then you can sort by retention at various timestamps. So I'd say we sort by the one minute mark and see where you're at. And you can just get a sense of how well you're doing, which videos are performing well, which videos aren't, uh, just to give you a sense, you know, instead of having to go videos one by one by one by one by one, this will help you give, get an over, overall sense uh, and see where you're doing well and which videos uh, are not doing so well <laughs> and where you need to make a few adjustments to help your channel grow. So I would definitely check that out. If you're, if you're on the package for the split testing, you're already paying for this anyway. So you might as well take a look and see which videos are performing well and where there's some room for improvement. Okay, so today we're gonna talk about a lot of the do's, but 
Before that, I want to talk about some of the don't do. So these are the things you want to avoid when you're starting your video. Okay. These will, these will destroy your audience retention curve. Intros. Hi, I'm Evan and I X, Y, Z, right? No intros. Live stream welcomes are the worst. You know, a, a live stream, the first couple of minutes usually really, really, really suck on the live stream, you're welcoming people, you're saying hi, you're asking about their day. That's great for a live stream environment, but not great for a YouTube video. Uh, again, we're, we're trying to assume that people who are watching our videos don't know who we are. That's our target audience. We're not talking to our subscribers. We're talking to our non-subscribers. This is the first time they're seeing you. So we wanna hit them with something that's gonna be really powerful. Uh, don't do a sizzle reel. You getting out of your car looking fancy or, on stage looking like a special person like none of that stuff really brings in a lot of attention uh call to actions we don't want call to actions at the beginning because we lose people you'll see a big drop in your audience retention curve um, and then audio only audio only is really hard where i'm working on a couple strategies actually with some podcasters like how do i turn my podcast into a youtube video when i don't have video when it's just an audio stream and every time i've seen it it's really tanked but if you can make it visually appealing i think there's a case i think there just hasn't been a lot of innovation on the podcasting side for how you can play with visuals so these are all the don't do's don't do any of these things and if you're looking at your data and you're seeing that you're you're at you know 40 percent retention at one minute you're probably doing one or multiple of these and it's not helping your videos grow okay so we just finished uh a breakdown of 990 of our videos. <laughs> this just happened on Tuesday. So what day is today? Thursday. So two days ago, I haven't even gone through all the data myself yet, but uh, I had one of my guy, my, I've, I have a full-time data analyst on my team. And that's what he does is goes and looks at our data and gives us suggestions on what's working, what's not working. And he compiled this giant spreadsheet of, of which videos are popping hard. You know, we're at 78% retention at one minute in which ones are underperforming. And so I'm going to share with you some of the insights that we found today, which I'm excited because I didn't even know some of these things until Tuesday. Um, having a full-time data analyst really, really helps. <laughs> uh, so I'm excited. Let's dive in and look at some of the some of the data. Okay. So that first minute, again, our goal is to capture attention. So multiple camera angles we found really, really has been helping. And this is some of the stuff that I used to do that I haven't done as much. It's, it's shocking when you look at your data, you might find, oh, something I was doing back in 2019 is actually outperforming what I'm doing right now. <laughs> and all of these numbers are for the past 90 days on my channel. So it's not lifetime of video, this worked. I've been around for 12 years or something. So it's not like this worked back in 2014 and it doesn't work anymore. All the stats is based off the last 90 days. So multiple camera angles. We did four transitions in the first 15 seconds, and that helped lead to 78% at one minute. Okay. Getting outside, switching up the background, having some color. Again, this one, four transitions in 18 seconds, 70% at one minute. So I'm seriously looking at, okay, what, what can we do besides just using, I love my studio, but besides just using the studio, what else could we use? Where else could we go? Now, some of this requires more editing. This one is pretty simple. This one, even if you're doing it yourself, you could just do different camera angles. For the intro, this is only for the first minute. Don't worry about making it highly produced. Um, I value editing. But I think ultimately it's going to be your capabilities to pull out great information. It's going to carry the day. But in that first minute, especially the editing can, can make a difference to hook somebody's attention. So you could do this even if you're filming on your own. But if you have somebody as a camera operator helping you, you can move to the side, move around, just have different angles. Um, and again, just getting outside if you can, if it's warm. We got summer you know, right here. So can you do anything outside uh, to just shake up the background? just to make it a little more interesting, a little more appealing. Um, one hack that um, Billy Jean loves doing for his ads. If you don't know Billy Jean, he's one of the, the experts on, on advertisements. So YouTube ads, Facebook ads, et cetera, is go look up in your city. What are the top places that people like to go to and then try to film there. So it, it takes more time. Uh, it takes more budget. It takes, it takes a team to maybe help you. But if there's an interesting background, so I'm in Toronto, there's, you know, the CN Tower, 
there's Niagara Falls, there's, you know, different places. But if you look at the top places people like to visit, and then that happens to be in your background, that could help just get people interested at the beginning. Fast cuts. So here's an example where we did 10 transitions in 21 seconds where we're doing a preview of things to come. And this is something that after looking at the data on this, we're gonna be playing with it. Instead of longer clips doing coming up, leading with shorter clips, but more of them, as opposed to longer, more in-depth clips. Really that first minute is people are justifying their time with you. I don't know who you are. I like the topic. Do I wanna watch this video? You know, it's like people will skim an article before they read it. That's what's happening right now. So if you can give them a chance to skim the video before they watch it, you can hook them in. So this is something we're going to be playing a lot more with. Uh, we're, I, after seeing this, I just instructed my team, hey, I want our next two weeks of videos on the top 10 channel, I want to be doing 10 cuts for each one. And let's see if we can play this out. So think about your own videos, think about your own content. Uh, you don't have to have 10 rules. But how can you take some of the highlight moments and instead of just one or two highlight moments, go for five, six, seven, eight highlight moments that are in more in rapid succession to say, okay, there's a lot, there's a lot of meat coming up in this video. I want to watch it. So this, this was really mind blowing for me. This was some experiment we did. I don't know, back in 2016, just as a, as a one-off and never went back to it for whatever reason. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute, that actually worked. Let's go back and look at it. And you know, when you have 10,000 videos like I do on my channel, uh, there's a lot of data to pour through to get some interesting information. So super fast cuts. I, I would definitely play with some of these for your videos. Today's topic was my process to review channel analytics. So frequency is the easiest one to understand. I would say for, for you guys, once a week is the minimum. Once a week is, is table stakes. Once a week is just, just getting into the game. And however you can make that as easy as possible, I'm gonna share some, some calendar ideas for you, some types of content that you can make that might make it easier for you to produce. You have expertise, you're thought leaders, you are genius at something to, to lower the burden of the production costs because you're not in the production business. If you were uh, if you were a camera operator, if you were an editor, your stuff better look good. My editor's real better look fire because they're an editor. Don't let that be the barrier. So once a week is the bare minimum. Three times a week, I'd say is the goal. And that that becomes scary for people. So again, looking at batching the content and looking at content types that you can produce really quickly. Uh, and seven times a week would be ambitious. Like ultimately, if you can get to seven times a week after seven times a week, I'd recommend a different channel. Like if you're going hardcore, you want to have, you want to go twice a day, put it on a different channel. I used to be at three times a day on my main channel and YouTube used to be that when you had, uh, when I went once a day, I saw a huge boost. When I went from once to twice a day, I saw another huge boost. When I went from twice a day to three times a day, I saw a, a little boost. It was diminishing returns. But YouTube's changed. Um, they're not really rewarding channels for going multiple times per day. So I'd say once a day at the max. Maybe nobody's there <laughs> in this group yet or thinking about it. It might be like, you're crazy. I've been thinking about one time a day. But it's it's doable to create. You know, when, on my Tuesdays, I make 60 videos. So it, it's doable to create. Now, they couldn't all be hour and a half sessions. But throughout the day, even, even as I go through today, uh, later today, I'm doing an interview with Tony Robbins for my channel. I'm going to be doing a bunch of different podcasts and, and Skype calls with people for their channel that I can cut and use on my channel. I'm, I'm doing a, we have this live, I'm doing a live inside my readers group. Um, so you can plan your days to have one big day, either per week or per month to create the content so that you have an effective, an effective schedule to go off and actually create consistent content. If you just kind of hope and, and wait for you to have free time to do it, you're probably never going to have free time to do it. So, so you got to put it in your calendar to actually make sure that it happens. Laura Cobb has a question, says, what if I'm comfortable being on camera, yet I'm not sure how to set it up? If it's just a how, the how-tos are everywhere on YouTube. 
like how to set up my camera and you'll find lots of videos on how to do it. I am not super worried about the gear. Like I'm not the gear guy. I don't know what microphone this is. I don't know what camera I'm using. You know, we're, we're doing zoom and PowerPoint. Like I, I really don't care too much about the gear. Um, I'm still making videos from, from my iPhone. You know, there'll still be videos on my channel that go live from me holding the iPhone and walking. So the how is always pretty easy to figure out. Getting comfortable on camera is the hard part. So if you're comfortable on camera, press record, start making videos and get better. People get too locked up in the gear and how to do it. The gear really doesn't matter too much as long as we can hear you. Uh, Nicola is asking, is it better to post seven times a week, a short video, four to six or three to four times a week, 10 minute minimum? I go longer. I look at 10 minutes as, as, the, as the barrier. Like Try to get the 10 minutes every time. Eight at a minimum, 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 but try to get the 10 minutes as you're going through it. Um, it's really hard to get a four minute thought leadership video to rank. So I'd, I'd much rather you be at four times a week, 10 minutes plus. Just think about how you can go deeper. Tell me another story. Give me another example. Uh, take me deeper into the advice that you're going to give. Instead of giving me one one bit of advice give me three if you follow the if you're making thought leadership videos and you follow the template and built to serve that gives you like go to the end right how to turn your 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 passion into profit uh that thought leadership template by the time you go through it you have a powerful statement you have a context sentence you raise the stakes you tell me a story you address the hedge and then you give me your three bits of advice on what i need to do that's easy a 10 minute video so I'd be looking at 10 minutes still as a minimum. Anyway, so that's that's the calendar that I would look at. Once a week minimum, three times a week is the goal, and seven times a week would be ambitious. So how do we do it, right? How do we do it? Like you look at that, you say, oh my God, that's crazy. Number one has to be batching content. Batch, 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 batch your content. Set aside a day or half a day to make content. If you set aside half a day per month, you could make four videos in that time and have a video a week. If we're talking about just bare minimum to get started for people who are, are starting and stopping, starting and stopping, right? Because the time, by the time you just get set up and put the cameras on and, and just get into the vibe and the zone of being ready to make a video and get the, the nerves out and everything else, you could make more videos in that time. The time it takes you to make your first video and the setup, you could make three, four more videos in that same amount of time. So, so batching content and creating the day. So this is when I used to film in my studio, this picture, my, that was at my dance studio. People asked me if that was a green screen behind me. Like, why did you put a shopping mall as a green screen? It's like, because it's not a green screen. <laughs> I'm in a mall. This is my dance studio. Um, so I would have my camera guy set up and we would film a whole bunch of videos all day long. Right. And I'd have one giant session per month where it'd be, you know, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., almost straight and just taking a break whenever I needed to go to the bathroom or eat something and then just keep go, 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 go. Uh, and I would make crazy number of videos and then mini videos during the week. So thinking about your own calendar, what is a, a feasible execution for you where you can say, I'm going to set aside half a day a month or half a day a week to make content. Because once you're on YouTube, you can be everywhere, right? Once you're on YouTube and you're making long videos, you can cut those up and be on every platform. So YouTube is our long form home. It's our base. And then we're splitting up the content to be everywhere. Does that make sense? So there's the thought leadership content, which the, the best template is in built to serve at the end. Uh, coaching, which is you basically just showing up. Mentoring is when you're taking the same person and, and going back for round two and round three and round four and round five. So think about some of the people that you have helped, who you just have a great vibe with, who you love being with, who they take your advice and they do something with it. And then having a series with them to say, hey, do you want to turn this into a monthly series? So we can then check in with them and seeing how they're doing. And hopefully they're taking the advice and they're growing and they're learning and they're improving. Uh, so that's mentoring interviews. You could be interviewing other people for your channel. So, uh, you know, I, I don't like an interview only channel because I want you to be the thought leader and the expert, but as part of a content mix, it could be great. And then the last content type is Q and A and Q and A is where you're basically just taking questions from your audience. 
So you can look at your comments, you can look at your, um, your YouTube comments, your Instagram comments, any other social network, if people are asking you questions. If you have no questions coming in yet, then you can look at other people's comments because chances are that guy is not answering his comments. And so Ryan can say, hey, I saw this comment. You don't have to say this comment was on my channel, right? We're not lying here. We say, I saw this comment that said this, and here's how I would answer it. Whatever the comments are on your own channels first, but if nothing, then go to other people's comments. Go to my comments. I mean, we're responding to all the comments, but it's not me doing everything. Go to Gary V or Grant Cardone or anybody who is in your industry. I'm thinking of the people in my in my field, but in your industry, look at their comments, take five to 10 questions and turn it into a video. So the topic today, how do you reach out to other YouTubers or people in your field to collaborate with? And I'm just gonna shorten this down to collaboration. So judging the value. Okay, this is a little bit controversial, uh, the value of collaborations, because when I was first getting started, everybody said collab, 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 collab. You gotta do a lot of collabs. You gotta do a lot of collabs. Collabs are the secret answer. It was, it was the buzzword, I guess, at the time. And I set out to try to do a lot of collaborations. The biggest one that I did earlier on in my, in my channel growth was, was this one here with Charisma and Command. This is the biggest one that I'd done, the channel that was, that was much bigger than mine, right? So now he's got four and a half million subscribers almost. And he made this video on me talking about uh, how to be a networker. And I never considered myself to be much of a networker. <laughs> <laughs> but he called it the introvert's guide to networking. He called me a master networker based off this event that um, we're both at for YouTubers. And I basically introduced a lot of people to him. Uh, my strategy for networking was really just listen to what people need and then try to introduce them to somebody who can help them with that. <laughs> Much more than me going up to people and say, hey, I'm Evan, how are you? Um, I'm, I, I suck at that stuff. But just basically listen to what people need uh, and then help them. And so... With Charlie, uh, this is Charlie who runs Charisma on Command. That's what I did. I just helped him at the event. Say, hey, well, what are you trying to find? And he he told me, um, and I introduced him to a couple of people who I knew, uh, and then all of a sudden I'm a master networker, and he's making a video on me. So this video worked out pretty well. It was, it was super um, humbling, uh, very complimentary, and at the end he even linked up my channel. So I I took a screenshot of this end card because that's if you click on this you'll go right to my channel and that's ideal in a collaboration is that it's not just a link in the description but that they're actually linking you up on the end card for them to go right to check out your channel okay so i thought oh my god my channel is going to blow up this is amazing this giant youtuber is featuring me this is fantastic come on let's go and then i looked at the data like when is this video coming up he told me he was making it it launches let's go come on my channel's about to explode <laughs> And then here were the numbers. So this is the day that the video came out. So these are my subs. These are my subs gained. So I was gaining for this month, right? From the, from the 1st to the 17th, I was gaining 1,088 subs a day. Then when that video came out, I got 2,200. The next day was 1,200. And then the next day was back, basically back to my average. So over the course of you know, that video coming up, those two days that it came up and popped, I, I, got, I gained an extra 1,200 subs over my average, right? An extra 1,212 over my average. And that's, that was pretty good. I mean, it's decent. It didn't blow up like I thought it would blow up. Uh, it's kind of the, you know, the heartbreak every now and then when you think something's going to do super well and then it just doesn't get you the results. <laughs> it really made me start to question, is this even worth it? Is it even worth spending all this time doing this collaboration versus just making another video? I'm already getting 1,088 subs a day. Should I just prioritize making videos instead of trying to set up collaborations? And, and after this is what I ended up really focusing as my strategy to grow my channel. I doubled down on content creation, not collaborations. It was a big shift. I love collaborations. I still do a whole ton of them. But I think for the, the ability to grow your channel, the consistent content is going to be your number one place to actually get the results. So uh, I've done a ton of collaborations. I'm doing a lot more today. This Thursday is my public facing day. Uh, so the things to think about, time, travel, coordination, expenses. 
is it worth the extra effort? Does it, does it help? Sure. But is it worth all of that extra effort to try to go off and do the collaboration? Now, the one with Charlie that I did on Charisma on Command, I was already in the, the event with him. We were already there. We're in Palm Springs. We're doing this, this YouTube event. So I didn't have to do any real extra work. I was just trying to help him out. Um, and a lot of collaborations have happened at those events. Now, we don't obviously have those events happening right now. But at, at events, there's a lot of collaborations happening at conferences where they pull you aside and say, hey, can I do an interview with you? Hey, can we make this happen? Um, and so those are always fun to do and, and can help your channel. But if you're going to set up a separate thing just to do it, it may not be worth it. Uh, is it. Is it worth you to, on the back and forth, on the coordination, on the travel and the expenses, all of that, if you're only looking at subs gained? There's other reasons to do it, but if you're only looking at subs gained, it may not be worth it. Um, again, versus just making videos. My typical advice is just go back to default making videos because every video you make is another shot for people to find you. And it's usually better for the long-term results of your channel. I would say if they're 10 times bigger than you, those are the collaborations that go after. If it's somebody who's just your size or smaller, if all you care about is channel growth, if there's no other value, you love them, it's fine, it's biz dev, there's another strategic reason. If all you care about is channel growth, I would be looking at only doing collaborations with people who are 10 times bigger than you. A lot of times the value just isn't there to do most collaborations. And this is so against typical advice that people give. But uh, this has been my experience from doing tons and tons of tons of collaborations um, that unless they're much bigger than you, it's not going to drive a ton of traffic. Okay, so then why do it? Why, why do collaborations? Why, if we don't care about, if it's, if it's not gonna help us with channel growth as much as just making content, why do it? Well, the first is networking, right? Yesterday, we we're talking to pre-show too. Pablo was talking about my, my one-on-one with Jamie Kern Lima. You know, she just created her book, Believe It. We did an IG live together. We're, we're both, we both have our eyes closed here because uh, we're doing a prayer. I asked her to do a prayer live for us and she had never done a prayer live on instagram so we did one together um and we're going to turn this into a youtube video so you know jamie i've known for a year we met i met her at brendan's uh house in in puerto rico and she's part of our beach gang and it's just good it's good karma it's good networking to support the people in your community who are doing things she went from being a waitress and having a thousand dollars in a bank account to selling her business for 1.2 billion cash. So even if it doesn't blow up the channel, it's still good for my business. It's still good for my relationship and it's still just good karma to do. And it's fun. I like doing it right much more than this video is going to help blow up my channel. Okay. Brand building. I mean, when I do an interview with Tony Robbins, uh, that, that could help the channel obviously. Uh, but it's a, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work lining up big people. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work reaching out. It's a lot of work maintaining the relationship. It's a lot of work figuring out the times, figuring out the technology. It's a lot of work to make this 21 minute interview happen, <laughs> but it's great for the brand. So there might be people who you bring on who could really help you with your, your brand that get, you're connected to them, even if it doesn't help your channel grow that much. It just puts you into a different world. Um, so we had uh, Matthew McConaughey on the channel recently. We're working on Deepak Chopra coming up, uh, you know, a bunch of other people that will help the channel grow, but probably not as much as if I just spent time making videos, but having them on the channel elevates the brand of the business that much more. So brand building, biz dev. Uh, this was a client of mine, Stephen Kelly. He used to run Sage. Sage is an accounting software company, uh, one of the, the FTSE top 100 companies by market cap in, in the UK. And he was the CEO, multi-billion dollar company. And we would do a bi-monthly. So every, every two weeks, is that bi-monthly or is that? Anyway, every two weeks, we did a show together on YouTube where we would answer questions from the audience. We'd have a topic and then we'd answer questions from the audience. So that series didn't help my channel grow, but, but it was a business opportunity, right? I mean, if you look at the views on those videos, they probably did worse than a typical video, uh, but it was a business opportunity. And, and I grew to really love Steve and, and his view and his perspective. So it was super fun to do. But again, the value isn't just in the growing the channel, 
the value is in the business relationship. Um, and then it's fun. I mean, I, I think people discount just having fun is a good thing. I'm going to do a whole bunch of interviews today and most of them will be on smaller channels. You know, like this one, I don't, I don't remember who this guy was um, or what his channel is, but it's fun. Like, I just like, I like being the first person on people's channels. A lot of times I'm the first person I've ever interviewed. And then they use that interview to go get other people to say, Hey, we had Evan on the channel. Do you want to join as well? Um, so I just find it super fun to do, even if there's no immediate ROI. Um, one example, there's a guy named Nick, who I was one of the first guys to reach out to him. He started a, an Instagram account uh, called Book Thinkers four years ago when I launched my book, Year One Word. I said, Nick, love the work you're doing. I'd love to send you a copy of my, my book. And it was a tiny Instagram account at the time. And he later said, I was the first guy, first author to reach out to him. I was the first author to say, to recognize him and say, good work. And can I send you a, a signed book? Fast forward to now, you know, three, four years later, um, I launch Built to Serve. And all of a sudden, Nick has the largest network of Instagram accounts for uh, nonfiction authors, right? So he's, he's profiling nonfiction book, nonfiction book reviews, and he's got the largest network of Instagram accounts for it. And when I said, hey, I got Built to Serve, do you want to review it? And now I haven't really been in touch with Nick for the past three years in between that. But when I sent it to him, I said, yeah, I'm down. Thank you so much. You helped, you helped kickstart my Instagram career. You were the first author to support me. And he, he's been a massive help in getting the word out for Built to Serve. Um, I helped him launch a podcast. I was the first guest on his podcast. And then he had all these other people, Grant Cardone and Jim Quick and all those guys on as well. Uh, now, I didn't know that Nick was going to be this guy. And most people flame out. Most people, if you're their first guest on their show, most people don't take it seriously and, and stop and quit. And they only, they only go five episodes deep or some people never even release the episode. <laughs> they just sit on it. It's like, whatever happened to that interview that we did together? Like, Oh, I don't know. I gave up. Uh, but every now and then you get somebody who pops. And I think it's just, it's just fun. If you, I see it as fun. I see it as community service. I see it as giving back to, you know, entrepreneurs and YouTubers. Cause when I was getting started, I really struggled. Uh, and so, I don't care if it generates traffic or interest for the channel or not. It's not a strategy. It's more just, it fills the soul. So probably half the interviews I'm going to do today after this are not strategic, just somebody I like or somebody's story who I like, and I want to, I want to help them. Um, and eventually a lot of those come back to, to pay off. If you stick in the game long enough, a lot of those do come back to help. Hack your network. So this one is very valuable because there's probably people who you're connected to that you, you don't even know that you're connected to. And so there's a couple of ways to look at this. The first is through YouTube. So on YouTube, if you go to your dashboard, there's a little card that shows you your recent subscribers. So last 90 days, it'll show you here. Last 90 days. And it'll show you who subscribed to your channel. So when I go to mine, I see that Kochi, Danny Mac, Global Video Pro One all subscribed to my channel in the past 90 days. And what they do is they sort it by the channels with the biggest subscribers. So all of you right now could go do this or after this, <laughs> after this session, you can go look at your own channel and see who has subscribed to your channel because these people are going to be easier to do collaborations with. If you reach out to them and you find out their email address or Instagram handle, it's a lot easier to get a yes because they already know who you are. They already like you because they've subscribed to your channel. And so it's much easier outreach. You can then click that see all button and everybody should have this card. This was an experimental card a while back, but everybody should have this now. It's, it's kind of buried on the page. So you got to scroll down. So dashboard and then scroll down, find recent subscribers and then click see all. So then you click see all and what happens is it'll take you to uh, a giant page and you can switch it to lifetime. So at the top, oh. it defaults to 90 days, but then you can switch it oh. to, uh, to lifetime. And then this will show you everybody who has subscribed to your channel that has um, significant subscriber count. So this is mine, right? This person has 5 million, 5 million, 3 million, 2 million, 2 million, 1 million, or whatever, 2 million, 2 million, we're getting there. Um, so of this list, the only one that I've done it with is Tom. 
So I've done a couple of collaborations with Tom uh, in the past, and he he was gracious enough to read a section of my book, Built to Serve, and and use that for our promo pieces. Um, the other ones I haven't, I haven't. I just I I undervalue this strategy. Uh, the amount of work to kind of reach out and and then back and forth. I just um, I just haven't prioritized it. I don't I don't see it as a huge win, um, even though some of these channels are bigger than me, right? I'm at I'm almost at three. So we've got three of these channels that are bigger than me. This one is almost double my cha- my size. I don't know what she does. I think she's more like lifestyle in Russia or something. Um, this guy does cartoon uh, psychology. Uh, I don't remember what Gavin does. I think it's lifestyle vlogging kind of thing. Um, so it requires some creativity, right? If, if if Chris is finding that there's a Fortnite channel that is subscribed to him and, and they're, they've got an audience, well, maybe your music could be on in the background for his next Fortnite series. Like yeah. maybe, maybe we make a, a special playlist for him. That's an hour of, of your music back to back. And he has a special, maybe he even streams with you. Maybe you learn Fortnite or maybe you're already a pro at Fortnite and you do a session together. <laughs> right. And your music's on in the background, that kind of collaboration. If you find it fun, it could be, it could be really good. Um, again, the work to set up. So now it's thinking about what's the value that you could bring their channel. Like, what are you an expert at that they need help with that they're not good at that they could use some content for? First off, if you go to their about page, there's usually some kind of contact information. Like you go to YouTube, look at their channel and there's, a, there's an about tab. Click on that. It'll show you contact information typically for them. Often it's an email. If not there, then you've got a Twitter or Instagram account that you can connect to. That's how you reach out and you say, hey, thank you. Hey, it's Nicola. Thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. It's awesome. Do you want to do some kind of collaboration together? I, I'd love to make a video on your channel about one, two, three, right? So you look at their channel, you see what they're great at, and don't just do the exact same thing that they're great at because that's competitive, but what are they missing? And then those could be topics for you to be able to reach out to and share. I remember I did one with a woman who was doing a lot of lifestyle vlogging stuff. And we're trying to find uh, an angle. Like, how do, we, how do we work this out? And it turns out she loved Shark Tank. And she didn't understand a lot of the terminology on Shark Tank. A lot of the language, a lot of the deal making. Like, she doesn't understand what Kevin O'Leary was saying. So I said, okay, give me a list of the 10 words or 10 phrases that, that you hear a lot that you don't really understand what it means. And I'll make a video explaining what those 10 things mean. So that was a kind of collaboration that we ended up doing for her channel. Um, there was a dating guy called the Josh Speaks, who's got a couple hundred thousand on his channel. And it's like, I'm not really the dating guy, dude. I don't know what, what we're going to do together. <laughs> I don't have a lot of dating advice to, to share. Uh, so, so I made one about, about belief and confidence and then how that can impact your entire life. And so that it, Sometimes it requires a little bit of creativity to make it happen. Uh, sometimes it's super direct and easy. Terry says, I'm going to look at mine when I get back home. I love it. I can definitely see the opportunity in doing more podcasts, live stream interviews. Yeah, especially if you're the one being interviewed, that's even better because you're on their channel. Um, you know, for, for most of mine, I mix it up, actually. I mean, I had, I had Tony Robbins on my channel. He hasn't interviewed me for his channel yet. Anna says, I get a lot of invites for podcast collabs and some I feel excited about, but I need a polite way to say no to some. Um, I figure what my default response is. Uh, but you can, you can, it's easy just to say you've got, you're full up right now. I mean, I, I would say something like that. Like I'm just, I'm full up right now. I don't have uh, a space right now. You can reach back out in, in, um, in a month, in two months, whatever. And sometimes I like putting up hoops for people. And then see if they jump through one. I'm going to share an example of a guy named Brandon later on in this presentation. And, oh, and I, I threw him through some hoops. Like, do this, do this, do this. And, and he did them. It's like, you know what? I like this guy. You know what? This, I'm going to give this guy a shot. Let's go. So one simple one is uh, I do a live stream four days a week with Drew at night. <laughs> And, uh, and another co-host, Zan the Man, and we answer business questions from the audience. And so if somebody 
out of the blue messages me, Evan, do you want to come on my podcast? And I have no idea who they are. And it's not some big podcast. I'll say, Hey, uh, our default response on Instagram would be Evan gets a lot of DMS. He can't answer everyone personally, but if you join him on his live stream tonight, you can ask him, this is your chance to ask a question. And most people never show up. Most people don't do it. Like it's a free live stream happening tonight. You get to ask Evan, if you're not going to spend the eight minutes to show up at that time, then I'm not going to invest the time to, you know, come on your show or your podcast. So you throw a couple of hoops in there just to weed out the people who are actually interested in it, generally interested in it. And we'll do the work. Um, and I like, I just love supporting those people. I'm making it happen. Um, so yeah, just seeing that you're, you're full up, whether it's now it's my team doing it. Uh, will they'll respond typically saying that, Hey, Evan's full up right now, but join him on his live stream, but it could be you as well. I mean, I'll do it with some people. There, there are a bunch of things I have to say no to it. It's hard. It's hard to say no to people, but at the same time, you have to protect your, your time and your energy and the work that you're doing. Uh, Terry says your gaming live stream is awesome. A great way to engage. <laughs> yeah, it's super fun. And, and some people do show up and the people who do, they get the extra love and the people who don't want to put in the little bit of extra work. It's not like I'm asking, Hey, um, buy this thousand dollar ticket and you might get a chance to talk to Evan, right? It's like, no, this is a free thing happening tonight. Come by. It's a little bit inconvenient maybe for your time, but we're, we're going for an hour and a half, two hours four times a week, pick a time, come on out and ask Kevin your questions. So anyway, so hacking your network, right? There's probably people already. Most people don't do this. Most people didn't even know this feature existed, right? Did you guys know this even existed <laughs> on YouTube? So you can look at it. And if you just scroll down every now and then to, to this one on your page, this keeps updating. This is on your dashboard, right? So you can just every now and then just scroll down and it'll show you any, if any three new ones that are big subscribe to your channel. And the faster you catch it, the easier it is to do some kind of collaboration with, right? Unfortunately, there's no notifications, at least that I know of, to be alerted. Big channel, just subscribe to you. <laughs> but um, at least this is now, this used to be a lot harder to find out who was subscribed to your channel because you just see a number. But um, anyway, these are great potential collaborations to reach out to and just keep, keep track of. We can just go cold. We can just say, here's my dream list. Here's my bucket list. Here's my ideal hundred that I want to reach out to and uh, start working towards them. But in easier ways, people who you're already connected to, who you may not ever have heard of, but they've got an audience and you can do something with them. I'm excited for today's topic. This is a good one. This is why I always love making the topics around what do you guys want to talk about? Because I don't know that I would have come up with this as a topic but uh you guys picked it so i'm excited to go today's topic how do you move people from watching your video to some kind of offer i love it and listen it's super important because it's not just about getting subscribers and views most of you i hope want to build a business right we're not just trying to be influencers we're trying to actually build a business, try to make money doing this uh, just so we can hire a team and reach more people and continue to expand our reach. I've, I've got 30 something people in my team. Uh, that doesn't happen if I'm not, you know, making money from the videos. It's great to have however many millions of subscribers and views and all that, but we have to be able to turn it into something. Um, and with, with offers, you can also go deeper with people. Okay. I show the process. This is not so much of a hardcore sales strategy, more of taking me deep into what you're naturally already great at so that it makes me curious that I want to reach out to you, that I want to check out your, your profile, that I want to find your website, that I want to do some kind of work with you. So two weeks ago, uh, when we had Paul on, he had shared on one of his channels. I forget how many subscribers this channel has, Paul. Maybe you can remind us in the chat. I think it was in the, in the low hundreds of subscribers. He was posting these short videos and, you know, three minute videos here. And it had 34 views and he does hypnosis. And then he posted a full video of his stage work of him doing a full show. It was, it was an hour and a half. And this was not with any pay. This is all organic. Got 4,000 views for a channel with a couple hundred subscribers. That's fantastic. And we use that in the context of longer videos work. It's really hard to get a three minute video to rank. 
So longer videos work. I'd love to see at least the 10 minute mark, but if you can go an hour and a half, <laughs> that's fantastic. We're getting some of our best results with three hour videos, eight hour videos, though mashing up pieces together could be really good. Um, and I'd love to see just trying to go longer on the content. Maybe you can get that to six, seven, eight. You'll start to see better results with where YouTube's at right now. That was what we talked about a couple of weeks ago though, but for this, it's showing the process. So if Paul's got a great hypnosis show, if he keeps putting out the show, even if he never says, hire me, even if he never says, buy my book or buy my course or bring me to your event or I do corporate gigs, even if he never says that, just showing the process will get people who want to work with him. I got my first speaking gig. Uh, that's not true, not my first speaking gig, but one of my first speaking gigs, my first like big speaking gig, I guess. The first where I was the keynote speaker, I uh, was in Kuala Lumpur and I got flown in because the guy had seen my YouTube videos and I never had anywhere in my videos, hey, hire me. If you need someone to speak, hire me, hire me, hire me. Because I was showing me speaking, people reached out and wanted to hire me to come and speak. I still get a lot of my speaking gigs now, mostly virtual, uh, all virtual right now, uh, but I still get them all because people see me speak on my YouTube videos, even though there's nowhere actually in any of my sequences or funnels or anything that talks about me being a speaker or, or hiring me. They see it and they want more. So Paul, if, if Paul kept putting on these hypnosis shows, that's what he does. Again, I know right now might be a little difficult during COVID, but if he's putting on those shows, he will get corporations and organizations reaching out to say, hey, how can we work with you? I love that show you did. Can you make that happen for us? Make sense? Paul says, yeah, that channel hut was a little more, a little over a hundred. Right. So channel this again shows the process of what you're great at. This required less work to do than a lot of his full on videos where he's direct the camera because it's just taping the show and, and there was no editing on this and no fancy music or anything. It was just the actual show and it did really well for him. So um, congrats. What's he saying? Since I put that full stage hypnosis video, I'm up over 1000% on views, view time and new subscribers in the last 28 days. I love it, dude. That's great. And it was just an experiment. So congrats. And again, going along, showing your process makes a huge difference. Uh, next, let's get to, to you guys. So Ashley, uh, I don't know if Ashley is here in the house, but Ashley uh, is from the Tapping Solution. And they, um, I, know, I know the founders, uh, um, uh, Nick Ortner started this company with his family and they help you get rid of your stress through tapping. And if you go to their Facebook page, or you go to their website, or you go to their, their content, you'll see all of these amazing people doing tapping. So you see Dr. Oz doing tapping. You'll see them teaching Wayne Dyer how to do tapping. And, and I don't know all the ins and outs, but you're tapping all the different, you know, you got you tapping here, you're tapping here, and you're tapping on your wrists and showing people how to tap. Jennifer says she loves tapping. Uh, so it's great. And they have all these case studies and testimonials and videos. But here's what's interesting. When you go to their Facebook page, look at the top. The, the biggest call to action right here is use the app. And this is where you have to understand what is the business goal that you're trying to accomplish? Where do we want to drive people? What do we want people to know about us beyond just watching our videos and education? What ultimately are we trying to sell? Are we trying to sell a coaching program? Are you trying to sell stage work shows? Are you trying to sell an app, a book, mentorship? Like, what are you actually trying to sell? And then showing me the process of doing it. So if I look at this page, I think, and I know a little bit about the company anyway, but even if I didn't, I'd say, okay, they want to promote their app. So what should the videos be on their channel? Somebody using the app. Instead of Nick just guiding people through how to do this, it should be Nick doing loading the app and saying, okay, today we're going to do our, our uh, tapping on anxiety, or we're going to do our tapping on uh, whatever it is, you're going to tap away. There's like so many versions of tapping that they have inside their app. Having somebody actually load the app and then do one of the free tapping sessions as a video without even having to say that this is a free app or there's a 90 day trial or you know, whatever offer you've got, just the fact that you're using it makes me curious to say, oh my gosh, how do I, how do I get a part of it? 
Ashley says, so this is for Ashley. She's writing. So you think you should like listen to the meditation that's in the app versus walking people through the meditation. That's interesting. Yes. If your goal is to get people to use the app, right? So if your goal is, I want people to sign up for our app, which as I believe that's the goal. Yeah. Okay. So she confirmed that that's the goal. Then I want to see Nick or whoever come on camera, load the app and say, okay, today we're going to do a meditation from our tapping solution app. This is great for, without even putting the app, this is great for whatever, like again, benefits of tapping, benefits of meditation. Okay. Let's press play and let's dive in. Again, you're showing me the process. What do you want to sell? And then show me the process of you actually using the thing. So it's not this disjointed thing afterwards. So not just somebody meditating, one of the other founders med meditating and then saying, by the way, we've got this free app that can help you show me actually using the process. Right. Uh, I pulled out Jennifer. So uh, Jennifer had this great post on Instagram. Uh, shout out to Jennifer. I see her here live too. And she wrote, so here at the top, when my tot throws a tantrum, I just start breathing to calm myself the flip down. <laughs> I love it. Then I think, what was the thing from that one parenting podcast or book I read on how to deal with this? And then I highlighted this part. On days like these, I'm definitely wearing a piece of uh, child Sedoni. <laughs> I don't know if I pronounced that close enough. All right. Uh, which has calming properties and helps me reduce anger and doubt. Okay. What would be great as content? So this is something everybody can relate to, right? Every parent can definitely relate to this. I'm, I think about, you know, my son or my nieces or nephews. Uh, they're a little beyond that stage now. You know, they're like uh, 10 years old. But when they were younger, just constantly freaking out and feeling like you're making mistakes everywhere and you're at the you know, edge of your patient zone. I would love to see this as a video. So instead of just showing, you know, your arm and then I can see the, the, you know, the, it's not a bead, the, the jewelry here and here, show me you going through it. My son is freaking out and it's driving me crazy. And so here's what I do when this happens. You see this stone? Here's, here's what it does. Here's why it has healing properties. And so, and then, then whatever you do, whether you sit down and you look at it or you just put it on or you meditate with it. Um, so show what picture it's a video, show a video of you freaking out with you, with you, like your hair all over the place and you stressing out like right here, this, this basically, I want to see it happening instead of you just showing this perfect picture. I want to see you being the mom with a tot who's freaking out. And you're trying to calm yourself down. And, and then what do you do? How, like, how do you actually get calm? Well, the jewelry helps you get calm. And there's a process that you go through that I would love to see that as a video. Maybe, maybe you're tapping as well. Maybe it's a combination of the, of the jewelry and the tapping. <laughs> but whatever you do to make that actually work um, as a video, you don't even then have to sell or promote the jewelry, you're doing it through the process of showing me how you uh, are getting out of this struggle that you're dealing with, with your tot, right? So it's, it's much more effective than just having, this is great copy. The picture is great, but I don't see you freaking out or stressed out or needing the calm to flip down, which would be great to see. Even if you're doing Instagram copy, this could be a good carousel picture of you like, <laughs> but real, like this was me today. Not some fake like you on a green screen pulling your hair, but this is actually me today. And here's what happened. And then the next one over is this. That's a good Instagram strategy. But for YouTube, how many how many moms? Because uh, I know that's your that's your tribe. How many moms are struggling with with their kids and stressing out and freaking out and you know? So showing me that you are one of them, and here's how to get through it, and here's how you get through it, and this is what you do. Um, some people will think, well, that's ridiculous. Like jewelry can't help me do that. And other people will be like, that's amazing. What's the name of that thing? Chalcedony. How do I get one? <laughs> How do I, where's your website? So you're just showing me the process of you doing that thing. It's hard to film during a tantrum. Ha ha ha. Very smart. Thanks. Yeah. Even, even think about it afterwards. Like you, you, you're not gonna, and you probably don't want to film your child freaking out behind you. Right. Just for privacy and, and everything else. But after it's happened, you're still stressed out. You finally put them down or, or somebody's taking over or they're having a snack or they're napping or whatever. And you're still, but you're still feeling the emotions of feeling 
overwhelmed and like a failure and not knowing what to do and needing a break and having too much anxiety. And so that's when you make the video. This is so valuable. Appreciate this insight. Um, awesome. Hey, that's what we're here for. Brandlytics. Let's go. I want to talk about end, mid, and pre-roll placements or advertisements to help spread more awareness for what you're doing. So ending CTA. This is something that I'm experimenting with Brendan Burchard. Uh, so Brendan and I partnered up on his uh, a, a bunch of things. One of them is his Growth Day YouTube channel. And the goal is strictly get people to sign up for Growth Day. What is Growth Day? Growth Day is his new personal development program app. Uh, it's designed to every ideally every day have somebody going live, people who you, you know, like, respect, training on personal development. It could be Brendan, could be Mel Robbins, could be David Bach, Dave Hollis, um, all these people to have them train. And then you pay one monthly fee and then you, you sign up. What we're doing is doing clips of his videos. And this, this is part of his morning show, but this is going to expand to having clips as his videos. And then on the end card is Brendan saying, hey, if you want to, like today is the day, you want to learn, you want to grow, you want to sign up for growth day, go click the link on this page. And this is blank right now because we just started the channel and have to get the 4,000 hours of watch time. <laughs> to be able to qualify. So we've got the thousand subscribers. Now we just need the 4,000 hours watch time. Um, but this is going to be a link that people can then click to go off and sign up for growth day. It's less of a let's build the channel up. That's more of a long-term play. Let's build the channel up. Let's get tons of subscribers to learn about growth day and more immediate at the end of every video, let's promote growth day and get them to click on the link. Right. We have found tremendous success. I don't know if I've talked about this side inside of Brandlytics yet, but we found tremendous success with on the end card, just having one big call to action instead of having multiple. So typically, if you go back on my channel, you'll see that we had four things on the end card. There was the a video that you pick, another video or playlist that you pick, a subscribe button, and a link to my website. And we found that as an experiment, we just tried one. And on most of my videos, if you go and look at my, my content now, you'll see there's one big call to action, which is to watch another video. So if you want more from XYZ, go click the video right there. I'll see you there, you're gonna love it. And then looking and pointing to, to go there. The clicks on that one video are getting more clicks than the other four elements combined. So now if you look at any of the channels, you'll see like these arrows flying in and it, people that were doing work, you know, consulting, helping with recommending the same thing, um, different styles of arrows, but basically all these arrows looking, pointing like, go click on this thing. So it's worth uh, a test. I haven't done enough and I don't know enough people who are doing the ending CTAs like this to drive to an offer instead of another video, but it's worth an experiment to see, hey, this is an option for me because in my end card, in your end cards, you can link to another video provided you're in the partnership program. And if you're not, it's at least something you know about that you can build towards, but it could make a big difference for getting people to click over to your site. It's his new big passion project, um, turning it into an app, or I think the app is actually already out or it's about to be out. Um, but yeah, it's awesome to see so much change in addition to the personal development field. So this is something to play with. Uh, I don't do it on my main channel, but we're doing it for Brendan on his growth day because the number one goal is get people into growth day. Um, Ashley, this could be an experiment for one of your videos, right? Hey, this is from our tapping app. You want to sign up for it? It's right there. Go click it, check it out and measure to see how many clicks you're getting from it. So that's the ending CTA. What I usually do is the mid shadow. And this is much easier to uh, implement as well as not impact where people go next. Because if you're doing this one, we're having a heavy focus on getting people to go to somewhere else besides YouTube, where if your goal is to grow the channel and make it as big as possible, you want to increase watch time. And so you want to have a video at the end that you're guiding people towards. And it's always much better to have you picking the most relevant video and you calling out that specific video to go check out 
than just having best reviewer or, or most recent. Okay. I do this one a lot myself personally. So somewhere in the middle of every video, we have some kind of call to action. So this is one that I did uh, for the book. So one of the advice that Brendan gave me for the book is have different people read the book. He said one of his biggest strategies to help him launch his book was he had people like Larry King and all these other people uh, read a section from the book and he turned that into video content to help promote the book. So my first question was, okay, would you be my first, Brendan? Do you want to read the book? <laughs> and he said, yes. And my heart was beating to ask him for that. And then I used that and got other people. So a lot of my videos, probably half of the videos uh, on my main channel will have a mid shout out here of somebody reading the book. So this is an example of Jay Shetty, but you know, we've got uh, Grant Cardone and, and Kevin O'Leary and Ed Milet and lots of people in, in personal development that you probably know and recognize. And then it's check the link in the description to get your copy. So we're interrupting our video in the middle. This one is at, this is a 30 something minute video. And this happens at the 1056 mark. So somewhere in the middle of the video, if you do this kind of shout out at the beginning of a video, you're going to lose people because they don't know who you are. They're not ready for an offer. Your retention is going to, going to drop. If you do it at the end, like this one, you're also going to lose a lot of retention because they just feel that it's a pitch. Um, what's the advantage is you can actually have them click right here instead of having to click in the description. When you do it in the middle, there's usually very little retention drop because you've gotten them to watch in this case, you know, 11 minutes of a video. So they're, in, they're interested, they're engaged and they know that there's still another, you know, 20 minutes left. So they want to stick around for what's coming next. Uh, so Tom Bilyeu has changed his strategy and does a good job of this now where he'll have a super quick mention at the beginning, but he'll interrupt his own interviews at an appropriate point to talk about whoever the sponsor is of the video. So somewhere in the middle of the video, in the most appropriate place possible, normally for something like this, you know, if we're doing 10 hard choices you need to make in life, uh, we've probably included a Jay Shetty compilation of videos somewhere here. And then right after you watch the Jay Shetty clip, there's Jay Shetty reading the book. And right after you watch a Grant Cardone interview, like there's Grant Cardone and I talking about the book. So this is to get people to click the link. It's in the description. We can't have it, you know, clickable here as a big button like we can with other ones, but we can have them to go click on the link down below. Uh, Drew says, is that mid shout out baked into the video or you buy the ad slot? This is baked into the video. This is organic baked into the video. You could buy ad spots as well. And we'll talk about that. The pre-roll is usually better than the mid um, because we time it specifically around something that I'm talking about. So Jay Shetty shows up after Jay Shetty clip. Grant Cardone shows up after Grant Cardone clip. The, even the topic. So Jay Shetty would read, this section he read was about relationships. Uh, talking to Grant Cardone or somebody else is gonna be a slightly different topic. There's different parts in the book. The Brendan Richard one talked about purpose, the clip that he read from my book. So also trying to match it with the theme of the video. So if you're thinking about, you're making a video, you're gonna have a call to action somewhere in the middle. While you're talking about your content, if you're gonna make a 20 minute video or a 10 minute video, at what point, somewhere in the middle, you know, like in the one third to two thirds mark, does it make the most relevant sense to talk about whatever offer you've got? So you can customize it. When you're buying a mid-roll ad spot, that makes it a lot, you, it, it's a lot more difficult, you could do it. It's a lot more manual to like put a manual ad spot right here and then to target that with your own ad. Um, and this is organic and free. Uh, so it's a constant driver. People keep watching this video. This kind of thing is better for a, a consistent ongoing offer. So I'm still gonna care about build to serve in five years. It's not just my 2021 20, marketing strategy and then I'm moving on to something else because I don't care about the book anymore. Like it's, it's a part of me, I care about it. It's deeply important to me. So I'm okay with this living inside my video for the next five years. This is not good for, I'm launching this thing next week, go sign up, right? Because most of the views will not happen inside the next week.
If you want to see this full video as well as train live with me twice a month to blow up your brand, join the Brandlytics training program. There's a link to join right there next to me. Continue to believe. I'll see you there.